Uh, my name is Anna Catterson, and I am the Executive Director of Online Learning at Heartland Community College, and I'm joined with my colleague uh, today, Jewel Crowley Custis, uh, who's a member of my team, and we work together in a, a new uh, facilitated space called the Teaching and Learning Commons, the TLC, we like to call it. Uh, our space uh, was really formed, I'd say, in the last nine months. And we have been uh, trying to encourage and foster innovation through innovative practices, through new and emerging technologies. And what we have found is by implementing these technologies, not only are we working with faculty, but we have found ourselves working uh, more with students. In fact, uh, on average, we spend about, uh, I would say, six hours a day working with 300 plus students at a time. So it's a fantastic opportunity for us to uh, share uh, with you some best practices that's worked related to virtual reality. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation. Uh, Jewel, do you wanna take a minute and introduce yourself? Yes, as Anna said, I work with Anna Catterson. Um, we're on the same team, work in the same space in the teaching and learning commons. I'm a coordinator and learning designer also at Heartland Community College. And um, we, um, I've been with the college for about five years and helping Anna build this space to facilitate um, more innovative learning for and teaching for faculty and students. Thanks, Joel. All right, so today we have a few goals. We, we want to uh, show you a very innovative technology, but we also want to show you the approach uh, whereas you feel comfortable being able to do this yourself. The technology, while it's very innovative, the process itself is very simple. And trust me, if we can do this, you can do this too. We have faculty that we help with this process. We've also uh, been involved with students as well as community members. And our goal and our initiatives were to choose these innovative technologies, but we want to make sure that it has a high impact on student learning and high impact in our community. Uh, we uh, quite honestly were tired of purchasing technologies uh, from requests through professional development funds that never got used, set in cabinets or in, uh, in faculty offices. And unfortunately, they just never were implemented to its fullest extent, nor did it have a good impact or impact our student retention. So because of that, we started a, a new initiative with our professional development funds. And out of those professional development funds, uh, one of those initiatives became um, the 360 VR experiences. Uh, the adult education department reached out to us when they heard about the technologies that we had. And it was kind of like an unexpected result. We didn't plan on working with adult education with this innovative technology. It was kind of uh, one of those things that were like, hey, we heard about this. Is there an opportunity for us to use it? And of course, we were like, yes, let's let's do this. And I'll let Jewel uh, share a little bit about the adult, adult education, education. Uh, project and how that tour became impactful to uh, our college. Yeah, so um, with our adult education, they contacted us. They are actually one of our most innovative departments on our campus, adult education. They are always willing to try something new to attract and attain more of students and prospective students. So they are, had been running into an issue with getting students in the door, uh, mainly. Um, so the overview of our project was to create potentially a tour or take pictures with using 360, showing um students where they could from where they park to the doors they would walk into to the people they would meet and to see those services that we provide so really a start to finish of what their experience would be when coming into our doors um, this is extremely helpful for people who maybe were nervous don't know where to go may not speak english very well so kind of they can practice they can see exactly where they're going um, and as soon as we made this tour for adult ed um, and showcase this more departments on campus, um, tutoring, library, counseling services have also been interested in creating tours um, so that they can also showcase these web this on their websites, on their social media, so students can feel more comfortable and we can attract those more prospective students to come to campus. 
Thanks, Joel. <clears throat> In addition, uh, this technology meets students where they are. And you might have heard that phrase before. In fact, Jay Cross, one of the researchers uh, behind our uh, development here has had stated that many times throughout different case studies, but meeting students where they are was an important need in the technology use. So what that means is that this particular technology, if a student wants to look at it on the web, they have that option. If they want to put on a headset and look at it in a virtual reality simulation, they can do that as well. If you want to project it in a classroom, there's options for that. You can look at it on a mobile device, on a tablet, on a computer. Uh, there are many, many ways to meet students where they are, and this technology allows you to do that. So I mentioned a little bit ago about professional development funds, and we were managing those funds that came through our department. We received um, many requests for microphones, for laptop computers, for tablets, nothing very too exciting. It was all pretty mundane requests that we continue to receive. Uh, and so we kind of took a new approach and we thought, well, laptops really should be provided through IT. Why are we requesting laptops? That was kind of uh, one of the features that we would get requests for all the time. And so we decided to create a new initiative and, and only take uh, requests through innovative uh, technologies. And so the money that we had uh, was through professional development funds that our college gives to all faculty across campus. We also had some CARES funding that we used uh, to kick this off with, but predominantly it was monies that we'd already had received um, for professional development funds. We were just turning it around. So instead of requesting laptops, uh, we put in the application for faculty to align it to course outcomes or to uh, frameworks that align within your department goals. Now, you might be surprised, but the cost of this is so low and extremely manageable for any college uh, in Illinois. And uh, we'll talk about the cost here as we get moving forward. But I did want to just kind of say, don't worry if you're thinking like this is going to be an out of reach expense for you. Uh, this is definitely a doable project. And I would say within everyone's budget who's here today. So this is what our space looks like now. Uh, we acquired an empty space on campus and turned it into this innovative um, learning center. We call it the TLC. We just wanted to share a few projects so you kind of get into the mindset of how we're creating a culture of innovation. You see a student on the far right using Oculus Quest. We're using a product called Simex. That was a, a grant that we funded. We call it a grant. Again, it's professional development funds. On the far left-hand side, that's a DNA model that we 3D printed. On the bottom left-hand corner, this is a globe clip. The left one that's in red was made of clay and we 3D scanned it and printed it out. Uh, and that's a clip that holds a, a globe on a stand to keep it from turning. We had some broken pieces that we were able to replicate for pennies compared to the price of what it was to replace it. We also purchased a large, uh, printer you see there at the bottom uh, and that does have a very high impact on our student learning poster printing um, is some was a need that we had across campus so we're involved in that as well and then you'll see another VR um, app we're using Google Earth that's a faculty member that came in to use that as well so just to give you a little bit of basis, here are some faculty who've requested innovative grants. Uh, Phil Vandiver, uh, we were able to purchase a light board, the Rico Theta 360 camera for Tara Jacoby, a nursing instructor. Dr. Wayne Bass is involved in virtual reality. Angela Kerr, a biology instructor, uh, is involved in three, uh, uh, 3D printing. Other recipients included Dameron Beverly, a nursing instructor, and Kara Richardson, who have developed Simex uh, for nursing simulations. Uh, Zach Petrie, an English instructor, is using podcasting. We were able to buy a very affordable um, a podcasting board. And then Ms. Heather Hugstadt uh, presented for adult education to start her 360 virtual tours, which is what we're going to focus on for the rest of this presentation today. So, Hi, well, my name is Heather Hartstar-Gonzalez, and I'm Associate Director of Adult Education at Heartland Community College. 
We noticed, especially after COVID, that if someone can give me a thumbs up, if you can hear um, Heather talking, that would be very helpful. And I'll go ahead and continue. And I want to make sure that you can hear the sound. Yep. Thanks, Molly. I see you. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate that. I'll go ahead and continue. This is Heather's uh, quick little video that introduces how she's using um, virtual reality. And it's kind of a testimonial for her. Students were a little more hesitant to come into our office and get the services that they might need or get help from the people that work here. Um, and we also are expanding our program a lot um, to our satellite campuses and um, different offsite locations. And we wanted to make sure that we were being as efficient as possible with providing the services that we offer. So what we did was we um, worked with our Office of Online Learning uh, with Anna and we created a virtual reality tour so that we could um, kind of give a 360 view of our office and um, embed videos and information about the people that work here so that students could get that information wherever they're at. Um, we're hoping, and we think this is um, really helpful for current students as well as potential students because it is embedded on our website. Students can look at it wherever they're at um, on their computer, on their cell phone, um, whatever. So if they're thinking about joining the program and they're not sure, they can kind of see who we are, what we're all about, kind of ease those nerves, um, and then see all the services that we provide. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for us to, um, to teach others about our program and to perform a little bit of outreach. And we think it's been really helpful so far. So that was Ms. Heather Huckstadt, uh, our faculty member that we've worked very closely with in the adult education program. And she stated the need of uh, what, what they were looking for. And I think it's important to kind of share that because uh, all of our solutions always start with a need first before we align any sort of technology to it. So Heather had a need to, to do an outreach to um, allow students an opportunity to feel more comfortable before they came to our to our doors. So you'll see the 360 camera there to the left of Heather. Uh, the 360 camera is pretty small. I have it in my hand. Uh, you can see that it will fit into the size of your hand and it's called a Rico Theta, R-I-C-O-H Theta. And I'll have Jewel explain more about the camera. We're actually gonna do a live demonstration, which we have practiced before. Um, However, on Zoom, it can be a little tricky, and we are actually at another state meeting today with Illinois Community Colleges Online, ILCO, so we are in a little study room together, Jewel and I, so we think we're going to be able to make this work, so you'll get to see a live view of the camera and how you can easily create 360 images. And then a tripod, you'll need a tripod to develop your application. Uh, we actually uh, bought a kit that came with the camera and the tripod, but before that we were using some tripods that we had found in storage. Uh, so really you don't need anything super fancy here. Jewel, I'll let you talk a little bit about the equipment and the cost and what you need to get started. Yeah, so as Anna said, she held up the camera. That's a Ricoh 360 camera. We actually purchased those on Amazon. Um, we purchased a kit that came with a tripod, a sleeve, and the charging cord. Um, that was on Amazon. Each camera was $269. You could pick a variety of colors, um, white, pink. Um, so just a kit on Amazon, super affordable. Um, a smartphone, uh, and it will work, whether Apple, Droid, Google. And then we did, a tripod is helpful, especially if you're not wanting to be in the photos, um, having a tall one or a small one, um, often if you want to put it on the table. And actually what's not listed here is um, you need a, you need a computer access to use what we use. Um, it's, the program is called RoundMe, roundme.com. <laughs> And it is free to use. Um, we do subscribe to the pro version, which is $99 a year. Um, and that just gives us more tools to create the tour and to do additional functions. But you do not need, if you want to play around with it just to get started, you do not need to pay. It's a completely free website. Thanks, Jewel. Thanks. So I had shared the what the camera looks like. Uh, there is 
uh, an app that you'll download in order to acquire the images and you use your phone, which makes it really handy. So we have uh, students who come in, everyone has a smartphone, uh, our students do at least. And so they can download the app. Our faculty have smartphones as well. We'll talk about how to download that app and acquire the images here in a second. But the cameras themselves for $269, they are 4K. Uh, and you can also purchase ones that have internal memory. We do not have um, very many that have internal memory. We, we use our phones to store the memory and then transfer the files over to RoundMe. RoundMe.com is the um, software that we'll be using, and we're going to highlight that for you here this morning. Uh, I can't see the chat. Are there any questions before we move on? Is there anything in the chat that anyone would like to share before we move on? Everybody doing okay so far? There is not anything at this time. Um, um, Robert says, I just got a camera, but have been the whole time um, in the presentation. The presentation is very interesting. So great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And we do have an accessible um, presentation. If anyone needs an accessible copy with alt text or speech to text, we have made that available as well. Happy to provide that on request. Just let us know. Okay, Jewel, from here, I'll let you uh, do the step-by-step -step of the process of how you get started. Yeah, so as Anna said, just with your smartphone, and we um, we um, have purchased kits, as we had said, so we put them in, we open the kits, and we put them in tubs, um, labeled, we put them just in Tupperware, plastic tubs, you know, you buy at Walmart or whatever, and we label them, we numbered them all, and so we have instructions inside that we've made so we can hand it to a student or a faculty member. And the first step is to get the Theta, the Rego Theta app um, from your app store. It's just a free download. And that is what you're going to use to connect your camera to. So um, your each camera has a serial number in the bottom. So once you get, you just connect, it provides its own Wi-Fi. So you just connect your phone and your camera to the same Wi-Fi so they can talk to each other. Next, you're going to take your pictures. Um, so basically, once your phone and camera are connected, you use your phone the entire time. You set your camera where you want it on your tripod. If you want to take um, a 360 of a sp certain space, um, I always remind people when we go and take photos, if you don't want to be in the photo, you need to seriously like leave the room, hide, go in a different room because it's 360. You forget that it's going to take the entire um, space. So, um, and so it, you just hit it like on your phone, like you were taking a regular picture, it does a little countdown beep and then it's done. So um, you can take as many photos as you want, different spaces. Um, for the adult ed tour, we literally did the parking lot, the door you go through, the next door. So if you are gonna do a tour like that where you're kind of leading people, it's, you know, you can do every space you go into. Once we are done, you just upload those pictures to RoundMe. So you can upload your phone to your computer or connect your camera to the computer and just drag those photos. It's literally, RoundMe.com is a drag and drop process. So you can just drag your photos up. And then once you've public, once you've made those photos in the order you would like, you can then publish your tour. And then that makes it, and make it public. So then literally the RoundMe community um, is able to search your tour, but then you can also um, share that on any social media sites and it comes with embedding codes to share on your own web, on your personal school website, or if your department has a special website, um, it's very accessible and it is available. You can um, do it on your phone so students can access it from a phone um, or a website or any social medias. Very easy process. Okay, thanks, Jewel. And this is what the uh, camera phone app looks like. <clears throat> um, I have a Android phone. Uh, so mine, I will get it on the Google Play Store. But if you have an Apple phone, you will just look for the Rico Theta S 
um, app. It is free, so you would want to download that. I have it on my uh, smartphone here, my Note, Samsung Note. And I believe our next step here is we're going to show you, I hope, a live demonstration of how you would acquire the images. Now, I did do a screen recording on my phone just to show you what the app looks like. So it's running over there on the right hand side. It's showing you how uh, what the device images are on your computer. Uh, there is a Theta 360 store that you can connect to. And then there's a, um, an eye icon that you would select what camera you want to connect to. So at this time, we're going to give this a try. So please be patient with me as we do this. So I'm going to stop my share, um, what I'm doing here. And I'm actually connected on Zoom with my uh, mobile device. So what I'm going to do is share my computer screen or my phone screen, rather. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So you'll, you're going to get to see my cell phone landing page. Does everybody see that okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Jewel, are we good? Okay, thank you. All right, so here's the camera. Uh, I've got the camera connected to the little tripod that it came with, and I'm going to turn it on over on the side. There is a power button, so I'm going to go ahead and power that on. Right, so it looks like I believe it is on. Okay, and there should be a cord that comes with it too, Jewel. I just want to show that it does come with a USB cord, and it looks kind of like um, a USB B and then the USB uh, end. And so if you wanted to charge it, you certainly could. You could just plug it into a cell phone charger and the port is on the bottom. Jewel also mentioned there's a serial number on the very bottom. So I've got that pulled up here and I'm gonna have you plug this in over there and make sure that it comes on, okay. Right, so then on my phone, I'm gonna to go to my photo folder, which you should be able to see. So these are some photo apps that I have. This is my personal cell phone. So no judgment out there if you see any um, apps uh, like Video Leap and Picture This. Those are all fun, immersive apps that you can download too if you're a TikTok person. There's the Theta app. Do you see the Theta app there in my photo gallery? So I'm gonna go ahead and open that Theta app. And now you get to see kind of the interface of the camera. So Jewel, is, um, it is powered on, great. So you can see uh, the app, you can see some of the pictures that I've taken previously. Let me open one up just so you can see what it looks like. This is one that we did in the theater. Look how good the quality is. I'm just spitting around so you can see 360. There's Pete Pusak, he's a member of our team too. And here I am. And if I go all the way down, you can kind of see where um, the tripod was. It tries to blur out where the, the tripod is. So you don't really see that, but you can see how clear it is. This is a 4K camera. I'm always amazed at how clear it is. I'm gonna zoom in. This is a big auditorium on our campus and you can see it's just super clear. Um, for 250 bucks, it is a really nice quality camera. So the Ricoh Theta, and I don't work for Ricoh Theta, by the way, but I, I would if they, off, if they offered me a position, I probably would. It's a really good, a good um, camera. So wanted to show you an image that comes off the phone. So at the very bottom, there's a few other uh, uh, options that you can choose. You have device images, there's camera images. This will do video too. It doesn't just do still. So you could record video as well. Here's another one that we took uh, in September in our teaching and learning commons. There, do you see that little blur space down there at the bottom? That's where the tripod was. So it does blur it out for you. You can see our space, some of our monitors that we have. And again, it's 360. So as Jules said, if you want out of the image, uh, you have to leave the space or you'll be captured in your next production. Now on the far right-hand side, uh, at the very bottom, we have the Theta 360. That will allow you to connect to the store where you can share videos on the Theta website. We don't really do that, uh, but you, you have an option too. If you wanted free storage, they do give you quite a bit. I think it's 50 gig, which is quite a bit. And then you can also stream live 
we have, Jewel and I have not ventured into that, but that is a project that we want to get into. Uh, if a faculty member wanted to stream live in 360, they could provide a link to students and then they could view it in 360 on their phone or use a headset, a VR headset to be totally immersed. So the real difference in using a headset versus looking at on the web is the headset you are allowed to look around the space like you're really there and you're completely immersed with no peripheral vision. However, if you look at a picture on the Theta app or on the website, you have to use your mouse to turn around and you know dr drag to see the whole 360 like I just showed to you. So some of our students do appreciate uh, do appreciate having the VR options, and that's available. So uh, the camera is on. You can go ahead and plug it, and we'll power it on. And I'm going to choose the Theta app over here on the right-hand side, that little eyeball. And it's going to show me uh, what camera do you want to connect to. And you can see I've connected to many of them. They have different numbers. Uh, usually I just grab one and run, right? But that top one I already connected to last night, so I know that it's uh, available. It's the very top one. So I'm going to choose that, and it's going to say, uh, do you want to connect to this device using this uh, Wi-Fi network? And it's really a communication Bluetooth between the camera and the cell phone. So I'll choose yes, go ahead and connect to that device. Whoops, let me make sure that my Wi-Fi is turned on. Just give me a quick second here. Go in here to connections and the IVCC. So do you see the list of all of these Wi-Fi connections? There's one called Theta. That's the one that I need to connect to. And then it's going to ask for a password. And Jewel, can you provide that to me? Yeah, it's YP30117777. Okay, we'll try this. <clears throat> the password is the same thing as the serial number on the bottom of the, um, oops, of course it's going to do that. So I don't think we need the YP. The serial number is the, um, the password. So it's on the bottom of the camera. You just have to type that in and it looks like it's connecting. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the Theta app and it has connected because I have chose that camera. So Jewel, why don't you put that maybe, um, I don't know, over in, on the desk or something. We're just gonna set it down. We're in a very small room here today. So this is live, the camera's turned on, I am connected. So it looks like I've got some um, extra brightness. So you can control all of your, your brightness, your ISO, you can bring that down. You can change the contrast wherever you're at. You have complete control of all of that. So you can see our space. Here we are in this little study room at IVCC in the Active Learning Center. Uh, we are uh, visiting their college today. So we're in this space. So here's our 360. We are live. And if a student wanted to put a headset on, we could share the link to this, or we could just take our picture, right? And put this in round me. So at the bottom, you can control your shutter speed. We can make it slower. Uh, slower shutter speed to uh, let more light in, or we could increase our shutter speed to make less lights. So we made the space a little bit darker. Our ISO for light sensitivity. And then we can also change uh, our white balance as well. There's outdoor, sun, there's auto if we wanted to change that. Uh, so our faces look good. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and click the bottom button, which is the shutter down at the very bottom, that white circle. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna give me a countdown. We can hear it, it's beeping. All right, so now the image was taken. The image is on um, the app. It's connected to my phone. It's synthesizing, which means it's processing. And now it's just going to render the image onto my phone so I'll be able to upload it to the computer. It's super easy. You can't get any easier than that. So wherever we go, we could do a 360. And Jewel mentioned uh, with the adult ed, we went to the parking lot, we went in indoors in the office, down the hallway, and there is the picture. Look how great that looks. It's super good quality and we can zoom in and um, edit that image if we needed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this. And I think at this time, I'm going to stop my share. 
and I'll do a new share. So we'll go back to our presentation. That worked pretty good, Jewel. Good, good work. We did it. Uh, that was the one thing I was most nervous about today was getting that to work. And that process went, went off very smooth. So we want you to be able to see how easy it was to connect the camera uh, with the mobile app, take a quick picture, and now what? Now comes the next step, and it's using Roundme. Jewel? So as I mentioned, um, we use a website called Roundme. It's I put the, the name of the website in the chat, just roundme.com. And it's a free website. It, um, you can easily upload your 360 photos to create tours. A lot of photographers use them. So it could be great if you have faculty who want to show different landscapes. Um, there's a lot of beautiful European landscapes. Um, what we really like is that you're able to create a tour and add hotspots, portals, maps, video, whatnot to your vit to your actual photo. So not only are you looking at the photo, but um, we will, there is like, you can add hotspots. So um, people who are viewing your video can click that hotspot and get more information, which you can link to. You can add YouTube videos. You can add text. We really enjoy that. So it's adding more dynamics to your photo so they could have students and um, any viewer who can actually look, um, understand more about what they're looking at. Um, Anna? Yep. yep. Oh, no, I just need to change that. So as Anna said, um, all of the photos are on your phone. Um, so the photos are saved two places. They're saved on your phone where you took them or they're saved on the camera. So I often, if I don't have um, the phone that the photos were taken with, I just make sure I have the camera and I just connect it to my computer We're using the cord it was provided with. And it is a drag and drop process. This is um, the black photo you see here that says drag and drop. That is, I would go to roundme.com and say, I would like to create a tour. And I would just literally plug my the camera in or my phone and literally from the file that pops up on my phone to, I would literally just drag the picture and it um, round me um, drag, pulls it up. I will say you cannot use photos. This is just only 360 photos and videos. So if you do have still images that you wanted to embed in your, in your tour, we can surely do that, but we would use a hotspot and put those photos in your tour instead of, um, we cannot create 360 with a photo, just a stagnant photo. So these photos, um, I actually, yesterday, I spent about two and a half hours working with a student group, um, physical therapy, and they made a Round Me tour um, of how to um, use a biofeedback machine. So we were taking pictures. So as I mentioned before, um, those hot spots on the picture on the left um, is a student, and he this is a still of the 360 image, and he's holding the machine. And what we did is... Um, we did hot spots, which are what the eyes are, the, the letter I, and you can take your mouse and hover over that. And those have information about, um, so we embedded a picture, like a close-up of what the machine looks like, um, links to where you could buy the machine, um, and what the machine is. If, you know, we linked to different um, articles that you can then click out of if you were looking at going through this tour. So the photo on the right is um, a portal. So what they did is they did, this is our classroom space, this is our lab space, and this is where you can find the machine on campus. So what these portals are, that little kind of drop pin, um, it shows you if you're in the tour, that is where you would click to go to the next room on the tour. And it kind of takes you, like zooms you through that portal to the next room. And you're able to do that by linking. And that is a way to link all your pictures together in the published mode. So it just flows to each picture very seamlessly. And all of these pictures are 360. So I had the students place these little eyes, these hot spots in different places in the room, describing different um, 
stuff they would see in the room, different tools and technology. So not only are they talking about their biofeedback machine, but as you're looking around the room, you can see students, you can see the teacher, you can see um, different equipment that the students use that they also described. So the next is once they've created their tour, they've uploaded their photos, they've added all their hotspots and portals and really connected it all. It's very easy to just name your tour. You can give a little description. Um, what you name your tour is how you would be able to search it. So a lot of our tours start with Heartland Community College because when you do go to roundme.com, there's a search bar and you could just type in Heartland Community College and you would be able to see all of the tours that we published under Heartland Community College. We give a little description. We always link um, where we are at in the map just connected to Google. So you can just type in your address or we type in Heartland Community College. It's pretty descript. We can even pick what building we were in that day. And then the camera info and that shares um, information about if um, somebody really wanted to look at each photo, they can see where the camera was, what kind of camera we looked at, any information there. You can add Users can add comments, but you can always turn that off on your tour. And then all we did was simply slide the, the trigger on to be published and saved. And so now that is saved on the Rico Theta website, or not the Rico Theta, the Roundme website. So it's searchable. And when you publish it, that's when you get the link and you can share your link. Um, so if you just wanted to share a link with somebody, um, hey, check this out. You could just share the link. And as soon as you got the link, you would be able to view the tour. You don't need an account or anything. Or as Anna's going to explain, you can then um, add, embed it or share on your various social medias. Thanks, Stuhl. And I think those hotspots are so clever because a student can click on them or a user can click to see uh, a video or a website, but if you're doing it in VR, if someone's wearing a headset, you can use the Oculus controls to click, or you can nod your head when you get over those controls if you're using Google Cardboard, which we have as well, and that allows them to connect to. So there are some options to produce and share, as Jewel mentioned, once your tour is done. Uh, once the, the link is created, students have or users have the ability to click a kebab up here. Let me highlight that because I want you to be able to see it. It's right here. Looks like a snowman or a kebab. We call it different things. But these are all of the options you have have uh, to view it. So you can view it in VR. If you click that, you could pop your phone into a headset. Um, or if you're an Oculus, you could just go right to the um, HTTP link and view it. You can view it in full screen. There is a share and embed. I'm going to talk about those here in just a second. You can project it if you're in a classroom, if you want to project it. Uh, we are now kind of interested in holograms, actually. We're getting started in some hologram projectors, and the projection um, allows us to view it in different ways. You, this is the projection screen over here. So we can view it in stereographic, um, Little Planet, uh, Panini, Architectural, Fisheye, Normal. We have some different projection ways that we can do it in the classroom and the hollow, hologram uh, projector allows us to do some advancements with that. That's like phase two. That should be our next uh, presentation, Sarah. We should come back your next one and talk about holograms. Uh, we can share how we're projecting these out. That would be fun. We're not there yet though. <laughs> uh, there's a QT VR navigation, which uh, if you select that, then the user can control uh, for accessibility purposes, how they want to view it on a screen reader device, or you can use the cursor keys on your keyboard to control it as well. Uh, auto rotation, if you turn that on, then if your mouse isn't moving, that 360 just pans kind of slow motion around the space. You can turn that off if you're viewing it. There's auto follow too. So wherever your mouse is on the 360 image, uh, the screen will, will rotate and change. Slideshow is also great for accessibility. And you might hear us mention that a lot. We are, we're really concerned about uh, making sure that everyone can view it uh, no matter the ability of the person. And accessibility is something that Jewel and I, you know, really take very seriously. And we want to make sure no matter uh, the student's background or language or culture or ability that they are able to view it in the exact same way as someone who is able-bodied uh, and an English speaker. So 
uh, using the slideshow option allows us to have that accessibility features that we find very important. And then if someone does need help or they want to send feedback, uh, there's options for that too. That's one of the reasons why we chose this product, really their VPAT, the Voluntary Product Accessibility Template that they provided matched uh, our goals for our department. So that's one of the reasons why we selected this tool. There is a share option as well. So if you do choose the share and embed, this is what you get. You have a Facebook, Twitter, Google, then there's a copy option that you can copy code to share it on other social media sites like TikTok, which Jewel and I just got into for our department. We're learning. We're grasshoppers learning. Uh, and then we have an embedded source code down here too. And that embedded source code allows you to put your tour on your website, which we have done as well. Uh, we also use SharePoint in our institution and we have embedded it on, um, we call it Faculty Central, but it's a page in a SharePoint site. And then we've already talked about the different options here for uh, projection. So let me clear these annotations. And then we thought we would show you some of our finished tours. And if anyone's interested, we're happy to pop into Round Me so you can see the interface of that if there's time. <clears throat> Here's a couple of examples so that we that have. Go ahead, Joel, if you want to share. Here. Yeah, um, so these are the tours that we have published on Roundme, so you can go and search for those. We did one um, for our CDL, that's our Child Development um, Center, and that is um, of our daycare center that we have at Heartland. And that takes you um, not through the parking lot, but it takes you through every room in the building. Um, so you can see all the spaces, including outdoor spaces, and that is really nice for um students and faculty and staff who want to place their child there. They're also using it for um, educational purposes. Our um, early childhood students are creating um, their own tours and explaining why things are laid out a certain way and how that translates to best learning practices for infant and toddlers. As we discussed, um, we have the adult ed tour here linked, and that takes you from the parking lot into our adult education area. Um, that has really great, we experimented with um, all of our adult education staff, took videos of themselves and we embedded those into the hotspot. So not only did you see their face, but you heard their voice. We did one for our library. So that way you could know where what services our library has and where it is found in our campus. And those photos that I shared earlier, that is a student example. They just made that yesterday there for physical therapy. And we set, we spent time not only in their PTA labs, but where their biofeedback machine lives and how to apply it. Of course, we'd love to play the adult education tour. And if you just want to click, it links out to Round Me. Um, so if you just have the link, as you see, this is that page that we, I mentioned about how you put your tour. So this is how it would come up for any user um, to contact us that has our address. You can add all of that information on that page before it's published. And then if Anna wants to start the tour. So you see it was winter. So when we took these photos, so um, this is the parking lot where you would park. Um, Yeah, if you click the kebab, this is where you as the user can show which how you want to view it full screen, if you want to put it in VR. And you see we have um, not used our mouse and it just kind of pans. So if you don't like that, you can turn that on and off. But if you scroll over to the left, you can see where, um, what parking lot, what sign you should be seeing to get into our parking lot. But as you go back to the front, you can see that hotspot, that's the I, and that will tell you, hey, come into this building. Um, this is the right building you should be at. Um, it's always overwhelming going to a college and not knowing where to go. And then if you click that portal, you're able, we, you're able to name everything how you would want them to see it. So this is how you would walk through the doors. This is the hallway. These are the trash cans you would see, the bulletin board, um, you know, keep going. The doors are right on your left or on your right. And you're gonna click that portal again. And then you'll see it kind of like zooms you, like 
zaps you through and now now you're standing in front of the office of adult education so you can click you know this is there's some information we added there's a link to go to the website page there's their hours and then there's a portal to actually go through the doors um so you can see that we're none of us are in these pictures so every time we took the pictures we had to go run and hide because we didn't want to be in the pictures so then um it, we wouldn't be distracting any uh, especially since they wouldn't be seeing us. We don't work in adult education. So you can see we have a welcome. This is where the front desk person sits. Um, just, and then there, um, there's Kalia's video. Um, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Oh. Um, we had everyone speak and um, Kalia, who is the, she is a Spanish speaker. So that is also helpful for students if they are worried or their English isn't their best or first language, they always know that as soon as they walk in the door, there's going to be somebody who is able to converse and speak with them to make sure they get where they need to go. So she's going to, Anna's going to click the portal again, and that's just going to take you down the hallway in front of every office. Um, there's a little eye and um, each person has a video um, kind of explaining who they are, what they do, and how they can help you as the student um, get to what you need. So just more, it goes through pretty much everybody who as an adult education learner would need to connect with, whether it's GED, ESL classes, finding a job, career connections. Um, so then they can all see those people and know it has all of their contact information so they know who they need to connect with. And this is just another pan of the offices. Um, and then it leads you right back out to where you parked your car so you know exactly where to go. So the experience is gonna be different depending on uh, how you're viewing this. We're viewing it on the web right now, and I feel like uh, this is a, a great for most people, but we have also found that some of our uh, students that come to us uh, are also using the VR options, and, and that experience is going to look a little different. So instead of using your mouse to click on these hotspots, they're using either Oculus controls or they're using their head to nod or point at different things. So our future goal, you know, is to con do additional tours. This is just one office, but uh, we're working with other departments across campus. So what if we wanted to continue? Jewel, I see your hand here in yeah. the picture. That's great. She's hiding down the hallway when we're taking the picture. I see her using her phone to take the picture, which was great. That's a good way to kind of show how this how this works. Uh, so, you know, our Rico Theta camera, if we look, there's the tripod that the camera was sitting on and all of the pictures and the, and the videos were just done on that, that little camera. And I think the quality looks really nice. Uh, looks different when you're projecting it in a classroom. It looks different when you are uh, looking at it in uh, VR mode. You'll notice uh, in this tour, I do have an edit option because I believe that I'm signed in uh, with with round me. So if I click the edit, I can go right in here and edit these hotspots. This is how easy it is to kind of drag and drop additional hotspots. If you want to edit that hotspot, you can edit it uh, over here. You can add additional by dragging and dropping. Here's a panorama location. If you want to take them, let's say if I wanted to drag and drop this someplace, I certainly could. I can also click the eye and I can go right in here and edit my tour description right here. You don't have to have a welcome screen. We like the welcome screen. Uh, we feel like that's helpful for our users, but it's all very intuitive. There isn't anything here that's too difficult. Uh, if you're familiar with any sort of social media, this is very similar. Uh, works in the same, the same way. 
let me cancel this. I might change something I don't mean to change. I'm getting the eye from Jewel. I can see her looking at me. So I don't want to make any changes. So I'll go back to the uh, view mode to see what it looks like. We have other ones as well. Uh, you can click on them in the presentation link in the chat. You're welcome to go to some of these other ones. I think our CDL one was really well done. Uh, not that adult education wasn't. They're all very different, right? They're very, very different. Um, all done great, uh, but it has a different perspective. Uh, it's a different building. It's not an office type setting. It's a larger building and it has um, more I think a uh, higher resolution perhaps because the lighting was a little bit better. So it gives you an idea of what you can do with each of the tours. Um, and it is interesting to see statistics on how well uh, they're being received. The adult education video, the first week that we had that launched, we had several hundred views. And I joke that I think it was all everyone in adult education that were was viewing it so many times because it was just so exciting. But we easily hit over... Um, Two or 3,000 views within the first couple months we had this up. And then I think it was at that moment, Jewel and I realized that we may have created a, a monster here yeah. because it has gotten so much attention and traction by our students that other people across campus, right, were like, uh, can you help us? We want to get uh, ourselves out and, and market ourselves in the same way. So uh, we've kind of become um, VR create, we have become VR creators for many different departments across campus. So we're real happy to be able to share it with you. And I hope that the takeaway today is that you, you feel confident that you could do this yourself. We, that was our goal when we created this uh, presentation, when we were asked, we really wanted to be sure that you felt comfortable and confident that this is something that you could take up and do, even though it's innovative, it's easy to use, but the impact is high. And that is our goal uh, here at Heartland. So we're happy to take any questions. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to, you know, we want this to be informal. So let us know what kinds of questions you have and how we can help you on your, on your own journey. Stop my share so I can see the chat better. <clears throat> Yeah, we, we certainly um, are getting a lot of engagement from our students, but it's also creating some collaborative discussions with, you know, faculty and other departments across campus. Uh, we are, there is a way with RoundMe to do multi uh, languages. So if you wanted to translate it to different languages, there's an option for that as well. RoundMe um, has a translator built into it, which is, which is great. So we can access more diversity and, and have inclusivity uh, built into it as well. Uh, it is a, available on JAWS, as, which is a screen reader for those that have visual impairments. Uh, it will work for that as well. Any questions that we can help with? Comments, questions? Happy to take them. You're welcome. Thank you, Renny. We've left them speechless. <laughs> <laughs> really uh -huh. speechless. No, I just want to say thank you. What a great idea, you guys. Um, so um, at the same time that you were doing your presentation, I was looking at cameras. Um, the, the price really range. Um, there is one that is $1,000, but there is other ones that are 60. Um, what is your advice? I know you, you um, mentioned the one that you are using, but I'm wondering um, <laughs> if the newest editions have um, more tools to play with, more things to add, or it's just a price? Yeah, so, the, yeah, so you know, um, our philosophy is we're, we're gonna get the tools that are gonna do the job that we need at the price that meets our budget. And, uh, and I know all of us are in the same position. We all are, you know, in higher education. So uh, I know everyone's budget is probably similar to ours, unless you've got some magic money that we don't know about. Uh, but look, those newer models, they have and the more expensive models of those Rico Thetas, they have internal memory. And while that's nice, it's not necessarily needed as long as you use the app to dump your 
um, photo images off of, you don't really need the internal memory unless you're doing live streaming or you're doing some uh, large, large, like lengthy, more than more than 20 minute videos. Uh, you don't need the internal media, uh, internal storage. So a $250 uh, range camera, mid range camera with the Ricoh Theta is what we recommend. We were able to do everything, including live streaming, because we don't live stream for hours. If we do live streaming, we plan on doing it just for a few minutes at a time. I think this one is the S2. We have the S2 and we find that it's um, it's capable, it meets all of our needs. And we have, a, a, I think, close to a dozen of these cameras now. Our students check them out. Our faculty check them out. We allow that. We want them to create and um, use the technology because of the price range of it. We feel comfortable checking them out to folks. Uh, we provide a, a micro-credential course, too, that you can take. It's free. If you're interested in taking it, let me know. I'm happy to send you the resource for that. But it talks about what is virtual reality? What's an Oculus? For those that really are starting at the bare minimum, we want to provide as much a tool so they feel comfortable using it uh, in the way that they need to. You do need to have a 360 camera. You cannot use uh, your cell phone unless your cell phone's capable of 360. If you want to do a virtual reality tour, then you have to do it in 360. So I see that uh, question, Robert, over there. Um, you you do need to have the um, 360 camera in order to produce that high quality 4K that you want. Also, um, Robert, to speak to that question, if you were going to use the free product Round Me, that you have to upload 360 pictures. So if you do have a still photo, you can upload, but I just put my still photos in hotspots and then have the greater 360 photo. So you can't just upload photos. It has to be in the 360. It won't take it. it you drag it and drop it and it won't It'll just tell you no. And you're just like, what am I supposed to do? But Round Me is free. Like I said before, we do pay for the pro account, which is like $99 a year. Um, and that just gets us a little bit extra features um, to be able to do extra things that we want to, if um, for when we create these tours for different departments. Yeah, the, the pro version allows you to get the HTML embed code um, and that that's important for us. We wanted to put it on a website. So we had to pay for the pro version to get the embed code. If you didn't want to have the embed code, if you just wanted the hyperlink to share out, you don't need to pay the $99. You could just, you know, share the link. Yeah, we talked about views. Um, and I, I don't know if I can talk too much about enrollment and retention for adult education because I, I don't work with that department close enough to know. But I can tell you that it has impacted other areas on our campus, including our CDL. It's included uh, increased numbers of our library. It's definitely increased numbers of students who we support in the TLC. Uh, we have a huge impact there. Uh, academic areas, that's a new area that we haven't tapped into. I was at a university before and we used it round, round me to do live historical interactions, uh, like uh, reenactments, history reenactments with uh, history professors, and it increased their academic retention greatly, but it was very strategic. Like we chose it for specific projects where they were having decreased levels of outcome retention. And we, we chose that technology to try to increase knowledge in those areas. Uh, but many of our faculty across campus are giving students an opportunity to use this as a final project. You saw that PTA, that physical therapy example, uh, the instructor said, look, I, I'd like for you to do a presentation on how this piece of equipment works. I don't even remember what the equipment is. It's something like bio a bio, biofeedback like device, electrolyte. like electric nodes on muscles. And it, it does like stimulate, shows uh, color code, color codes that impacts different muscles. And so the students chose to do that. They chose to use VR. Uh, they had a choice of doing a PowerPoint or using a VR and, and students are choosing these more UDL 
um, methods of demonstrating mastery. When, and that's what we're seeing an increase on and which eventually, right, increases students' retention and success in their programs. So I don't really have a lot of data yet on that, but that's a great question. And maybe that's something we should write about, maybe do a, a future article on in the future. We'll try to do a white paper on that. Connect with Jewel and I on LinkedIn. We share a lot of our research on LinkedIn as well. So we'd entertain that as well. So so it's right at 1130. I don't want to um, overstep, Sarah, so I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Anna and Jewel. This has been so, um, so helpful and so exciting and motivating to think about what can be. And you mentioned the UDL and, and people choosing that option. And I'm thinking it's, I would imagine it's doing a lot for confidence boosting and you know, really some deep learning. So thank you very much for sharing with us today. Um, thank you for everybody who attended and asked great questions.